motor that I have wanted to shoot for the channel for, for ages, if I'm honest, but I wanted to get a modified one and an owner that's very into the cars because, you know, when I do see these, they are usually driven by people that care about MPG, they care about having a small car. And rightly so, because this car is super small, but what I want to do today is chat about the idea of this being a first car, a second car, a little run around town car, because they are getting cheap. This one we're sat in today was just £2,000 for a 2010 plate. And as the title would suggest, I would say this is a high mileage little car. 139,000 miles this car has got on it. Second owner, he bought it with 109,000 miles. So first owner did, you know, 110,000 miles, say, in it. And that is really good numbers for such a small car. And I will say, of course, this is modified. It doesn't feel like it's got 140 odd thousand miles on it. That's a lot of mileage for a little car like this. Remember, smart cars say, you know, this is a rival to a smart car. A smart car of 140,000 miles wouldn't have an engine left. It would have blown out a long time ago. It wouldn't feel as tight as this does. Yes, it's modified, it's been changed, but it's still refined in here at that mileage. And, you know, bearing in mind it is a small car, that is really healthy numbers. And why I wanted to do this video more than anything, cheap, high mileage, little car like this. So from the factory, these have a one liter engine, non-turbocharged up front. I was talking to the owner, I said, you know, what sort of MPG are you getting out of it? As well, I am getting some good numbers actually, nearly 60 MPG in this little thing. Tax is completely free and is insurance group three. I can't remember the last time I shot a car that was insurance group three or under 10, if I'm quite honest. We're interrupting today's video to show you guys the new release on FYD. We have three new stickers. As you can see, I've put them on the back of the Mighty Budget 300C today. We have B-Road bashing. We have the FYD apparel just there in old English text. And of course, we had to bring back the much requested Dreams Arch logo. These are sold separately and are available right now. Link is in the description. Support the brand, support the channel. Channel, go and grab yourself some stickers FYD apparel link is in the description. Let's get back to the video It is 42 pounds to fill up with V power. That's premium Unleaded in this car because there is a few modifications that have been done to the engine bay to create a little bit more power from that one liter because if you're slightly younger and you want to do cars up this could be quite a good base for you guys 69 brake horsepower from factory this one is running at the crank 94 which doesn't sound like a big power gain and stuff i think it is but it doesn't sound like a lot of power but then you realize this car is 850 kilos from factory this one has no rear seats though so this one's about what 825 without the rear seats because funnily enough these did come with rear seats from the factory it has t-sport injectors up front in this car to produce a little bit more power Toyota Igo manifold, which is a three to one manifold and a custom remap. That's how it's able to produce quite a lot more power than factory. I know it doesn't sound like loads more, but that makes a big difference in one of these small cars. It also has an exhaust system. Now, as you'll hear the exhaust, it's there, but it has a side exit. Yes. The owner went, do you know what? I'll have a little bit more. So we'll open that up, the side exit exhaust. <laughs> so much louder. <laughs> a beautiful Series 2 RS Turbo in red with Doris on the back of it coming past us then. Anyway, slow down and create a little bit of a gap. <laughs> so loud. <laughs> Again, we'll turn that back off for video purposes, but that's the sort of stuff you can do to one of these. The owner has had to think out of the box, like the surround for the double din had to come from Pakistan. That's the only place that you could pretty much get a double din center console surround for one of these, which is insane. You've really got to think about this though. When you're slightly younger, little bits and bobs like the throttle body that he wants to put on this is from a different car. The T-Sport injectors are again from another car. You've really got to think out of the box to make something of this car. Because you know, sometimes when you're slightly younger and insurance is crazy, you look to cars like this and 
you know, you could get into one of these for two grand, say, and it will do 60 MPG even when you're flat out. So we will have a quick look around the IQ. Such a cool, quirky car, this. Lowered on BC coilovers with wheels. It does look a lot more aggressive than the factory. They're a little bit higher, but little bits and bobs to point out. So wide in comparison to its length. Um, relatively boxy car, but I mean, you do see some girth, especially with these bits here, which I never really noticed from, you know, seeing them in town and various bits like that. You don't really notice these sort of i'm assuming it's for wind deflection size of the door though in comparison to the actual car itself it's a relatively normal sized door but when we come inside i've been able to see this in the in-car video but there is a brown interior which sounds a bit odd but i sort of like it in a weird way it's completely brown even the carpets are brown the seats themselves are more of a dark chocolate i'm gonna say you have a pouch just here to put all your small bits and bobs here sort of like a glove box but not many of these smaller cars actually come with glove boxes this center stack which again i think is pretty cool very easy to use if you're just getting into your first car this is something that again is easy to use you don't even have to look at the dials to actually get what you want five speed manual gearbox a little bit of a cup holder down there which is a shout again tons of room i mean this is a small car and there's so much room for activities in here which is cool even down to center bit here and all of the space in the back of course this is where the back seats would usually be it feels like a much bigger car than it actually is just admit this three quarter bit here is sort of my favorite part wheels lights boot the rear bumpers really big as well with these little sort of wind deflector bits here i'm assuming that's what they are on the bumpers again leave a comment below but it sort of adds to the look of this again something that i would have usually just glossed past but i quite like the look of it if i'm honest we'll show you guys in the boot though because this is a big deciding factor for a lot of people the brown continues in here but as you can see this one has no rear seats in it but you do have this from factory it's basically a parcel shelf but it's a bit of cloth that goes over and as you'll see, you do even get cup holders and stuff in the back if your rear seats were in. We'll just pop that back on. Again, a little bit of privacy from the back end there, but it does extend over the back seats from the factory, which is, again, a really cool thing. If you do want to take the back seats out, you've got tons of room. I mean, the amount of space in here is absolutely fantastic. If you bring that back down, we will just show you guys in the driver's cockpit. Again, tons of room for the driver, easy to get in and out of, brown doors, sound system, electric windows, all that good stuff. You have electric mirrors as well, rev counter just down here. I'll shut the door and just show you guys. Just move the steering wheel out of the way for you guys. Fuel gauge just down here. Does have an aftermarket JVC head unit. Even cool things like the dome light. I know it sounds so silly, but you can directionally move it to wherever you need it to be. That's such a cool feature that you, again, not necessarily notice. And again, it's a really easy laid out car to actually get to. If you're a young driver, this would be one of the easiest cars to get to know very, very quickly. But we'll turn the ignition off and come back out of the car. But yeah, on face value, I am very impressed with this little car. It is so cool. As I've already said though, inside, it's a pretty cool place to be. There is tons of space. Of course, the back seats have been taken out of this. I think they're a bit obsolete, if I'm honest. If you do need them, they're there. It does shrink down the boot space dramatically though, but there is still room in here, even down to the point where in the front, in the position where I'm in, I'm very comfortable in here. I'm very at home. It doesn't feel like a small car. You look out the front and I could be pretty much in any Toyota product. And the back, I mean, I can touch the back window from here if I wanted to. It makes life a lot easier for parking and stuff, but the best thing is it doesn't feel like that car. It doesn't feel small. Even when you are darting around, putting your foot down, it doesn't necessarily feel like a tiny car. Now, we'll also say it's because it's got BC Racing coilovers on it, which, again, is, is a shout to have on one of these. I mean, if you've got a light car with a little engine and you want to have a little bit more fun, coilovers are, of course, the right way to go. And that paired with the 17-inch wheels that I've already said about, it does create a little bit of a better look. They're a little bit boxy, a little bit too boxy, a little bit too high from factory. So lowering a little bit on them coilovers and actually putting a bigger set of wheels on with some okay tyres is the right way to go with this car if you want to get a little bit more performance out of it. I know this isn't a performance-based car. It's not a performance-based review, but that aspect of this car is there if you want it to be. And I must admit this one, and this is why I waited for a more slightly modified one with a few bit of engine trickery going on, some suspension mods, 
wheels, you know, various bits like that. I wanted to get a car like this to show you guys that these cars are out there and it is possible to sort of modify and in effect build a car like this with no problems whatsoever. And with a bit of knowledge, it is very easy to modify. And then you'll have a cool little car. And I think it's cool. It's not quite a Japanese K car because of course the literage is slightly bigger than it should be. Yes, it's not quite the K car that you're after maybe than the slightly different chassis, but very easy car to just daily drive, especially if you're trying to get a couple of no claims under your belt. You even have little cool bits like a rev counter. Not a lot of small cars have rev counters. I know it sounds silly. It's the first thing I noticed, like, oh, it's got a rev counter. That's so nice of Toyota to actually put a rev counter in a small car. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.